Welcome back to Fine Art Diary. Today we are going to see how to paint this beautiful landscape with mountain range. Two weeks back I got this comment to paint Tatra Mountain from Poland. As I promised, I'm going to do it. So here it is. Let's get started. Before doing anything, let us focus on some of the areas. I never visited this place, so I need to rely on some videos and some photographs. But I am not going to copy directly from the photograph. So I have done some sketches as my homework for this painting. And finally the composition I got is this. In this video, I am going to talk what should be your approach to an academic painting. Here the foreground is coming this way. The midground is coming from the opposite side, then the background is coming from the left again, and then the clouds are coming from the right, and everything is coming together and creating this composition. I'm going to use this 18 by 12 inch canvas. I don't want the raw white of the canvas, and that is the reason I tinted the canvas with raw sienna and raw umber. And you can see I am getting a nice warm hue throughout the canvas. This is my today's color palette, starting with titanium white, cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, crimson lake, deep magenta, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, viridian and raw umber. As you know, for most of my landscapes, I am going to use this color palette only. Alright, so I am going to start with a preliminary sketch so that it will be convenient for us to place the objects. For this I am using raw sienna and raw umber, what I was using for tinting the canvas. The goal of this step is to position the objects. So we can be spontaneous and we don't have to be worried about any detailing. I am referring my drawing what I have done and only taking the bigger shapes from that. That's alright, now I am going to start with the sky. First of all, I am taking both of my blues and titanium white. Mix it well. Also adding a little bit raw umber to desaturate the mixture. Now let's start painting. The key light is coming from the left, so the right hand side will be much more darker than the left hand side. So because of that I am adding more blue and more raw umber into the mixture. The overall value of the sky could be a little more brighter, so I am adding a little bit titanium white to it and let's blend the paint. You may have noticed one thing towards the bottom, I intentionally kept it a little more brighter. Then it will be convenient for me to create the distant mountains which will be comparatively bright and I can show the value difference. Now let's take a bristle brush, it is hard brush, taking titanium white. 
we can add a little bit blue to keep that tint of the blue. Now let's start doing the blocking of the cloud. I'm going to use the edge of the brush like this. The underneath surface is still wet and it will be easy for me to blend. You can see I am using the same process but the direction of the cloud can be different. Some of you commented not to skip any of the portion of the video. Actually whenever I feel something is happening very repetitively, I generally make it fast forward or I just show it in time lapse to save some of our time otherwise the length of the video will be too long. Now I am taking pure white once again to add the highlights to the clouds. Only one thing I am keeping in my mind that is the light is coming from the left. So actually you can see in this step I am adding the highlight for the clouds. Also blending some of the areas. Now in acrylic painting the paint will dry very fast and you will not be able to blend the paint. The white is already there in my brush and I am just scumbling over the previously painted layer. That's alright now let's move on to the distant mountains. The value of the distant mountain has to be a little darker than this area. I am using the previous mixture only adding cobalt blue to it. And now you can see it is one step darker than the previous mixture. And let's paint the mountains. You can see the mountain is barely visible but it has to be like this at the distance. Now let's add a little more cobalt blue and raw umber to make it one step darker and we are going to paint the next mountain range. That's alright, now let's go one step darker than this mixture and we are going to paint the next mountain. You can see I am using the same colors just playing with the values and how beautiful depth we are getting in the painting. I am making the mixture even more darker to bring the mountains towards the mid ground. In this particular scene one thing can be maintained that is the key light is coming from the left 
So whatever the shapes I am creating, the left hand side is a little bit lighter than the right hand side. Just to show the presence of the light in the scene. Now let's mix the mixture even more darker. And for the first time I am using green in this mixture because the mountain is coming forward towards the midground and the local color will be visible this time. You can see it is jumping from one value to the next value in the value chart. And like that I am layering the mountain range and creating the distance. That's alright, now let's paint the mid-ground and we are gradually coming forward. For this, I am going to use Titanium White, Raw Umber, Deep Magenta. I am mixing the color of the rocks and that can be a kind of grey color. I am also mixing Ultramarine Blue to it to make it a little bit cooler. I will start from this area and will define the planes. We have to remember we are still in our blocking stage and the background, the mid ground and the foreground. First I will complete the entire blocking and then I am going to start the detailing. This plane is getting direct sunlight and that is the reason this plane is so bright. So right now I am painting the mid value of this plane and later on I will come back with the shadow and then with the highlights. That's alright, now in the same mixture I am adding raw umber and my blues to make it a little bit darker for my shadow areas. And you can see it is a little bit cooler than the mid ground because in the mid ground the direct sunlight is hitting so that is warm so definitely the shadow areas will appear cooler. So I am just trying to find out the shadow shapes and accordingly I am painting with no detailing. And now let's create some texture of the rocks here and there. That's alright, now let's add some greens for this area to give the hints of the grasses. For that I am mixing ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, viridian, a touch of cadmium yellow and you can see I have mixed a dark green color and let's get started. Blocking in some tree shapes in this area. Later on, it is going to help me to visualize. That's alright, now in some areas let's create variation and with the same mixture I am adding titanium white and making it a little bit lighter. So this mixture is going to help me to blend the previously mixed grey with this particular color because this is a kind of mid value between these two values.
That's all right, but I still think it could be a little more harmonious. So I'm mixing yellow ochre, crimson lake, and titanium white, and making a kind of mid value. And let's paint randomly to add some harmony. That's all right. Now I'm using the same mixture for this area also. Now going back to the base color and let's add the rim light for this cliff. That's looking fine. Now let's block in the foreground. And for that, I'm using raw umber and deep magenta and mixing a dark value. And let's paint some of the areas very randomly. To make it even more darker, I am adding viridian and deep magenta to the same mixture. Now going back to my green and let's paint here and there very randomly. Now in this stage nothing is too precise. And we should work very spontaneously. That's alright, going back to my green and adding yellow ochre, cad yellow medium and a touch of titanium white to make it a little bit lighter. Now let's start painting from the left hand side as we discussed previously the key light is coming from the left. I'm giving the hints of the grasses over here. That's alright, now let's work on the foreground cliff. For that, I am mixing my blues, viridian and yellow ochre and mixing a kind of very dark green color. As I always say, we have to start with a very spontaneous brush strokes. We don't have to think too much about the detailing. Now let's take the same mixture and let's create some branches over here. For this I am using a rigor brush. Now I am using the same mixture and with the help of the comb brush will create some leafy pattern over those branches.
Now let's do the blocking of the foreground rocks. So for that I am using titanium white, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, raw umber. Let's mix a little bit more blue and mixing a kind of cool grey color because the entire surface is in the shadow. So the areas not getting the direct light will appear cooler because of the sky bounce and that is the concept. And that is the reason I have mixed the paint cooler. So spontaneously creating some random shapes and later on I am going to convert these into rocks. Now going back to my green mixture and this time I am adding a little bit of titanium white to make it one step lighter. Now let's add the impression of another plant. Now I have to go back to the individual areas and have to add the detailing. So first of all. I will start with this area and then I will come forward. For that I am taking titanium white, a touch of crimson lake and a touch of blue. It's a very light grey color. I am adding the brush strokes just to get the sense of the detailing in that area. Those can be some small lakes getting the reflection from the cloud or some streams. Or maybe the ridge of a mountain which is getting direct light. The secondary reason I have to add this brush stroke says to separate the different shapes. Now I am going to mix a darker mixture. For that I am using my blues, deep magenta, titanium white and a touch of raw umber. I think I can mix a little more titanium white to it. In blocking stage most of the places I painted the mid-tone. Now I am adding the highlight and the shadows. So like the previous concept, the darkness of the shadow areas will increase gradually how it is coming forward. So the main concept is, the contrast of the background will be lesser than the contrast of the foreground. So actually I am trying to achieve that. Some of these areas are getting direct sunlight so will be much more brighter than the rest of the areas. And definitely I am going to add much more warm color later on over it. Still it is a part of the background. Just to show the distance I kept it cooler. Now let's add some highlights in those areas. That's fine. Now we are going to move towards the midground. The same mixture I am making it darker by using ultramarine blue and draw umber. My plan is to add some detailing to the shadows of the midground. So here and there I am creating some cracks in the rocks, but I should not overdo it.
that's all right now making it even more darker to exaggerate the shadows a little bit so now i am thinking of the detailing and breaking the bigger shapes into smaller shapes Going back to my greens once again and for this I am using Viridian, Yellow Ochre, Raw Umber and the Blue and I am making a darker mixture this time. I am adding some variations in the green. Now making the mixture even darker by adding Viridian and Crimson Lake and let's paint some tree shapes in this area. Now it's time to paint the highlight of the mountain. And for that I am using Titanium White, Yellow Ochre and making a warm mixture this time because we are showing the hints of the direct sunlight. Over here I am trying to visualize where the direct sunlight is hitting and accordingly I am giving the lightest light. That's alright, now let's work with the foreground. So first of all I am going to mix the shadow color and I am taking deep magenta, my blues, crimson lake and raw umber and it is a kind of cool color because I am dealing with the shadows. Now let's mix our green color, for that I am using Viridian, Yellow Ochre, Cobalt Blue, Titanium White and we can see it's looking very cool. So I am using Cad Yellow Medium with this to make it warm. This green is for the foreground grasses, so it has to be warm because it is getting direct sunlight. Now by using this fan brush let's create the pattern of the grasses.
Now let's make the paint even more lighter to give some highlights and for this I am mixing white and yellow ochre. This time I will not overdo it but will paint some of the areas. That's fine. Now to make it harmonious, let's mix a kind of orange color and for that I'm using titanium white, crimson lake and previously mixed green. That's alright. Now I'm going to paint the foreground rocks and for that I'm mixing a cool gray color. Taking Titanium White, Deep Magenta, both my blues and Raw Umber. I think still it is a little bit too dark, so let's add Titanium White a little bit. Because the rocks are in the shadow, the top faces will get the bounce light from the sky. And that is the reason my mixture is too cool. So finding all the top planes which are getting direct bounce from the sky. Right now the planes are appearing too bright but I am sure after drying it will get the correct value. Now let's exaggerate the shadows and for that I am going to my darker mixture and will find the gaps in between the rocks. Also mixing a half tone by mixing my light and shadow paint and will define some of the planes which are away from the light. That's alright, now it's time to paint the foreground trees. So going back to my green and making it a little bit cooler and desaturated. So adding some leafy pattern like I have done in many of my videos. For this I am using a filbert brush. Making the mixture even more cooler and will add some of the leaves which are getting sky bounce. Going to my green once again, in that let's add a little bit viridian and making it a little bit saturated and once again let's add some leafy pattern and this time I am trying to make it a little bit different than the previous one. That's fine, now let's add some tree branches with our previously mixed grey. And for this I am using a rigor brush. Now going back to my green and making it more vibrant by mixing cad yellow medium. And I am going to add some of the leaves which are getting direct sunlight at the back of this tree. That's alright. Now let us also add some dried weeds here and there. Now it's time to add some life to this scene. So let's add some animals. Taking my blue deep magenta, raw umber and a touch of white and making a cool dark grey color and this is going to be the shadow part. 
So first of all, let's position all the animals and let's decide the composition and later on I will come back for the detailing. I already have decided I am going to make these animals with a few limited brush strokes. The positioning is done, now let's break the shape. So taking this lighter color which is pretty warm and trying to block in the light shape. That's fine, now let's take my blues and titanium white and making a kind of cool grey color. That will be the original color of the animals. Now let's exaggerate the highlights a little more. I am using the same warm mixture with a little more titanium white in it. Now the last thing I am going to add that is the shadow of these animals. Alright, we have completed the painting and here are some close-up shots. Alright, hope you enjoyed the session. You can share your thought in the comment box and don't forget to subscribe the channel because many more painting video tutorials are coming in future. Thank you very much for watching.